Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion node breakdown. Today's node is the Mat Control node. So we're going to jump into Fusion where I've already got a project I was working on. And I happen to be using the Mat Control node. So I'm just going to go ahead and use this to teach you about the Mat Control node. So we don't have to rebuild and do all this other stuff we just covered. I want to say yesterday and the day before the Luma Keyer and the Chroma Keyer. And the Mac control node is used to combine and manipulate multiple alpha channels based off of other key nodes or images with alphas. So I'm going to walk you through this and kind of show you how I came about to using the Mac control so you can see why you would use it. And once we get to it, I will uh, cover the actual node and show you how to make changes on it. And this specific project required me to take this footage with her in this red dress and kind of change it to the color of the leaves. So it matched the leaf color a little bit, but also had the ability to kind of fade up from the original color to the new color of the leaves. So kind of like this. So it kind of has the look of fall leaves changing. So, and you can see by looking at this footage, this is kind of a key nightmare based off this footage, just because her dress is red and everything else in the image is orange, which is mostly red. So bringing in a simple node, like a bitmap node or something like that, really doesn't work very well because you're pulling out too much of that red information from everything other than just the dress. So I know there's tons of ways to approach different things in VFX. So this is just one way I approach this one. And I definitely didn't want to approach it by uh, having to rotoscope every single frame to rotoscope around a dress, which is an option, but I did not want to do that. So I ended up using multiple keyers. Basically, I took our media in and the first keyer I used was a Luma keyer. And we covered the Luma keyer the other day and I chose hue, even though you might think a red might be a good thing, but it just was not working very well. So hue worked the best in dialing it way back to give me this alpha channel and it's really not that great of a key. You can see how much is still in there. So using one key wasn't an option. And all I did is add a polygon up top just to kind of block out the sky because it was giving me other issues later on. But I wanted to pull another key because some of this darker stuff in here just wasn't pulling through correctly. So where her dress is extremely shadowed out, the information just wasn't getting keyed out correctly. So this is why I used the chroma keyer. And the chroma keyer, even though you look at our alpha and there's hardly no info, and it's a lot of stuff going on here. When we look at the actual image, there's really nothing coming through other than where I really needed that info to pop in on her dress right in there. So with these two keyers, I needed a way to add them together. And there's multiple ways of doing that. You can technically use a merge node and merge the two together, but you have no way to manipulate the actual mat. Same with if you used a channel Boolean node, you'd be able to use a channel Boolean node and add the two together. But again, there's no way to actually uh, control the, the mat in the, the alpha channels within that node. So this is where the mat control node comes in. So on the mat control node, it kind of acts a little bit like a channel balloons and a keyer node put together. It's a little different. So up top, we have the choice of what channels we want to combine. We can combine the red, the green, the blue, the solid, clear, or we could combine our alphas. Now, 
within that combined selection, we can pick a combine op. So what operation? And by default, it's set to copy. So it's just gonna copy your foreground to your background. But you also have add, so you're adding the two channels together. And you've also got uh, other operations such as subtract, inverse subtract, maximum, minimum, as well as and and or combined operations, just like we have on the uh, channel booleans. As far as filter goes, we have the typical box, Bartlett, multi-box, Gaussian, and fast Gaussian. Your clipping modes are your standard clipping modes with frame, domain and definition, and none. You can also contract and expand your alphas, your combined alphas. You can change the gamma of your alphas. And you can alter the threshold. And you've also got this ability to restore fringe, just like on most our other key notes. And you've also got invert mat, as well as your solid and garbage mat invert options. Now down here on the bottom, you have the option to post multiply your image. And I know I talk about post multiplying all the time, but you may want to watch when you select this, because if we look at our Lumic here up top, we've already post multiplied our Luma key coming out and we've already post multiplied our chroma key coming out. So there's no reason to add that post multiply again. But if we didn't post multiply and we needed it multiplied coming out, we can go ahead and check that. And multiply garbage mat just allows you to multiply any additional garbage mats that you're putting in. And as far as the node itself, our inputs, we have our mask effect input. You've got your background input, your foreground input. You've got a solid mat input, just like on other keyer nodes. And we've got a garbage mat input, just like on other keyer nodes. So this is really what makes it a lot different from, say using a multi-merge or a channel booleans node, you don't have these options for solid and garbage mats, whereas the mat control you do. Now, additionally, on our mat control, we've got the ability to control spill. And since this isn't a blue or green screen kind of key coming in, I really don't have any spill to control, but if we are combining keys from a blue screen, green screen, or a blue screen and a green screen, we could use these additional spill suppression methods. And if you did, you've got the choice of controlling spill on blue or green screen, your spill suppression level, your method, whether it's rare, medium, well done, or burnt. And just remember our uh, reasons for using these different ones. Rare does very little spill, medium, is primarily for green screen, while well done and burnt are primarily for blue screens. You've also got fringe gamma, as well as fringe size, fringe shape, and your ability to control the color of your fringe. Now, mind you, when I change this in my fringe gamma, you may think, oh, it's doing nothing, and leave your button at some random place. And then you get further down your line, and you see some odd things going. This is actually adding information. You just can't see it in your alpha. But if we switch over, you can see all this information got added from our fringe gamma. And if I change that fringe gamma and knock it down, you can see it. So all these operations actually work. You're just not going to see them on your alpha channel. So as well as changing your fringe color. So just keep that in mind if you change that and uh, down the line you see odd things happening on your, on your uh, footage. It's probably because you made this change and didn't realize it because you're in alpha mode and you're not going to see those changes. So let's reset all these so we're not getting that odd stuff. So that in a nutshell is the mat control. So it pretty much allowed me to combine these two. I did a little threshold changing 
and these you're going to want to change after you plug in the rest of your stuff because you're really not going to see the effect of it on your alpha channel so for this specific footage i use my mac control in the two alphas from my luma gear and my chroma gear combined them and i use them in my color corrector so i input my original foot footage into the color corrector and that gave me the ability to change the color. So I can go in here and change the color of her dress now based off that key. And with that changed, once you have that changed, and this by no means is finished, this is just kind of uh, the beginning stages. And as a professional note this is really a good way to work anytime you're doing any type of VFX like this is come up with your proof of concept first so this is the rough draft bare bones showing what we can do possibly and then go in and fine-tune it so adding additional nose to clean up and because obviously she needs her skin cleaned up and uh, all that stuff but with this matte control I could come in here and use this matte control to clean up some of that matte issues that's going around the edges there. And it's honestly an issue with the original footage because if you see the original footage, it's got this odd halo issue going around the edge of that color of the dress. And it's just kind of transcribing into our mat but the mat control allows you to fix some of that stuff because we can come in here and make some changes and dial some things in to up our mat a little bit and once you've got your mat kind of where you want it just for that rough mat then you can move on so i just added it to a merge node and on that merge node i created the ellipse animated the ellipse to follow her around how i wanted and that allowed me to add this fade. So I'll be able to manipulate the fade so it moves up or moves down, going from the leaf color to the original color of her dress. So we were able to go from this footage to this footage using the matte control by combining multiple keyers. So that is the matte control node. I will see you in the next node breakdown.